hand. Is there somebody who can take minutes? I can do that. Thank you, David. I've done that for a little bit. Uh, we do not have the minutes for August 9th for review or August 23rd. So on to the next item, hearing on agenda items. Uh, any uh, resident can talk about agenda items. So that's uh, at this point, Thomas and Steve. Do either of you have I any just, thoughts? Yeah, I'll, I'll actually I'll, I'll hit upon an item that I talked about before, and and uh, with Rich's um, um, changing its practice to having people who he was sending an agenda to now signing up for notifications uh, with the town. Um, and Rich, Angus, and um, Kim saw an email thread on just the process issues behind this. I just want to offer again, he, I did not. I'll wait till somebody answers. Thank you. Um, I, I want to reiterate to the larger group that after the last commission meeting, I did contact um, Liza about the issue of making sure notifications are enabled when they send out and post or post uh, agendas or any other things that get posted to the Environmental Commission on the uh, um, agenda section of the, the website. And after that reminder, I can say that I did not get a notification for the agenda. Now, I don't have a personal problem with it because I know where to go for it. I went to look. So I'm just trying to say, if you're telling people to go sign up for notifications, I want to hope that Rich or any of the co-chairs actually provide more feedback to Liza that um, people are going to be expecting them and they're not happening. I'm just trying to be helpful here with, with having things work so people get what they're expecting. Thank you. Sorry, anyone else? And I just admitted Kevin Hall. Okay. No other comments. Okay. So as, as far as I'm aware, uh, there's not an, an, a legal obligation on the part of the town uh, to send out notifications, but they added that as a uh, way for people to get notifications of meetings, right? Not just the environmental commission meeting, but any meetings that take place. Um, and uh, before this was happening, um, I had kept a list mainly of people who had been on the environmental commission in the past and just as a courtesy sent them the agenda. But now it's possible either to access the agenda on the website, usually about 48 hours in advance of the meeting or uh, to get a notification as apparently not the notifications don't always go out uh, and i have experienced that myself but that's not a legal obligation on the part of the town as far as i'm aware and, and that shouldn't be that shouldn't be an issue since the town is 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 is, is touting as you just said the capability of people signed up you know and they ought to be able to get them I mean, I always get mine for the town council meetings. I just don't get them anymore from the environmental commission meetings. And by the way, I did check all my settings. You know, I'm still enabled for the ones I'm supposed to be getting stuff from. So I don't know what's the matter with them. It's, it's, I've learned it's a cockpit problem. It depends on the person doing the post. They have to know how to do it so the notifications will happen. And there's no extra work really to do it. Yeah, my concern is that the legal no notifications are there. Uh, and if they are not, uh, that's a problem. This is not a legal problem. So I'm sorry, Steve, uh, and, and I leave it up to you or to other people to uh, uh, get the town to send out the notifications. I don't know what that is, what that involves technically. So I'm- Well, I, I, told, I told you in the email. I'm, I'm, Steve, I'm email. not trying to follow up, sorry. You're so indifferent about this. <laughs> I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm glad you're I got, leaving. I got other things I've got to do. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you're leaving by the end of the year. <laughs> Good. 
Good. I'm glad I'm leaving. Uh, onwards. Uh, plants, 40 cedar green. Uh, the applicant uh, had discrepancies between the application and the drawing. I contacted Connie about this discrepancy. She then contacted the applicant, but ha I have not received back an updated uh, application uh, uh, correcting the discrepancies and the numbers for impervious coverage. So we won't consider that this time. We still have time to consider it, and we'll consider it the next time. So does that mean Richard has been withdrawn from the next Board of Adjustment meeting? No, no. Uh, the preferred. next Board of Adjustment meeting happens after our next meeting. Okay. So we're, we're okay. Um, 111 Hampton Drive, uh, this uh, was an applicant wants to remove a rear deck, construct a new two-story addition, a new covered deck, a new paver patio, walls, bluestone walkway, and stairs. Um, groundwater recharge is apparently between zero and six inches a year. Site is apparently in a riparian zone. The site is apparently adjust, uh, adjacent to a flood zone AE. And slope is apparently between 3 and 8% for most of the property. Uh, the coverage uh, overall, uh, except, well, let, let me put it a different way. Total proposed other items are 1.18% over the al amount allowed for the zone, but the overall total impervious surface is under the, the percentage allowed for the zone. So at this point, um, I'm noting the uh, new uh, uh, NJDEP amendments to stormwater management rules and uh, that the zoning officer states that compliance with Chapter 15.28 that's of the township ordinance, flood damage prevention needs to be documented. And I wrote the Environmental Commission agrees with this statement. The Commission also recommends a letter of interpretation to determine the extent of the riparian zone and therefore the applicant needs to comply with NJAC 7 colon 13 Flood Hazard Area Control Act rules. The commission represents that the applicant present a plan for approval by the township engineer to retain stormwater runoff on the property. The commission recommends retaining stormwater runoff on the property with green infrastructure and disconnect any downspouts or sump pumps and not use cisterns or dry wells as the primary way to retain stormwater runoff unless the other listed methods cannot meet the requirements for retaining stormwater runoff. Discussion. If there's no discussion, do I hear a motion? Yeah, for some reason I missed this one, Richard, so I did not um, review this plan in detail. So I actually don't feel I'm in a position to If you want to take a minute to look at it, uh, David, that as maybe other people haven't reviewed it either. This is the zoning application, correct? Correct. And it comes out, as you said, to a total impervious coverage at the end of the, the work still under the limit. Correct. Yep. It's next to, I think, a brook, and I'm trying to remember if it's called. It is. Brook. I know the location. Yeah. So that Greenbrook has a riparian zone, which definitely extends into the property owner's area and may even extend to the point where they're doing the construction. I don't know. Can we actually grant a variance that that conflicts with the uh, riparian ordinance of step of the state? Well, they need to apply for relief when when a uh, property uh, encroaches on a riparian zone. So they would need to do certain things to 
comply with the state rules. So if there's construction that already exists and they're simply building on top of that construction, then they may be able to uh, have uh, uh, relief because the construction exists. We don't know whether that construction was done with a relief in the past because no documents were submitted to uh, corroborate what happened in the past. I'm in agreement with the um, the recommendation, Richard. Okay. So, motion to accept the letter of recommendation as drafted by Richard. Yeah, I'll second that. Second. Any objections? Or no, no objections. Okay, Angus. Angus may not be listening at this very moment. Yes. No objections. Okay. So then we'll consider it passed. Okay. No new business. Uh, Scout Projects Mountain Park. I'm sorry, I forgot about Deja. Um, so if you can bear with us for just another minute, Deja, I forgot that you were there. Um, Mountain Park. I am not remembering whether we approved uh, the budget for uh, the Mountain Park um, uh, plants. Uh, does anyone else remember? Angus, did you take notes for that meeting? This was the last meeting? I think so, yeah. I did, but I haven't had a chance to fully review it yet, so. Okay. I, I'm thinking that we did uh, not, that we were waiting for him to submit, and I resubmitted that. Um, to everyone to review, uh, I'm asking whether anybody got a chance to review that. I think it was a discussion, nothing that was subject to a vote last week, last meeting. Well, the, uh, Kevin, the thing would be, okay, that I would like to see us approve it. Um, it's a, we would take the money out of the um, tree trust fund because we're buying plants. Yeah. Uh, and probably also ancillary uh, materials such as uh, uh, sand and uh, mulch. Uh, and let me see if I can find his budget again. Give me a second. Okay, so he has a budget that is including a drain pipe, elbow pipe, a pipe cover, soaker hose. We're looking at possibly a, a projected price of eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars, uh, roughly twelve hundred dollars. It could be as high as thirteen hundred dollars. Um, I'm happy to uh, share the screen for this, uh, but that to me does not seem like an exorbitant amount to spend on a rain garden. So let me come to here, to here, to here. Okay. I hope you can see that. Um, so you can see that he's budgeting for the plants here. Um, he's getting them at a discount from Great Swamp or from the farm uh, at Green Village. He probably does not need all of these plants. He'll get uh, donations of the Joe Pye weed. Uh, so the most expensive plant would be the Amelanchier uh, and the Virginia Sweet Spire and the Red Chokeberry. And he probably does not need four because those trees, those shrubs get rather large. So he would probably go with only three. So what he's putting together as a budget is probably on the high side. Uh, I support the concept, Richard, I'll defer to you with, with regards to the specifics of it. Yeah. Um, 
the also the uh, scout has two hundred and fifty dollars from his um, scout troop. So he, he'll be spending some money, or a scout troop will be spending some money on on uh, funding this. There'll probably be um, some other minor expenses along the way. Uh, we may have might have to. Uh, N not use rocks because rocks at a school might encourage kids to throw them. So we might take an, another approach to that. Any comments, questions? I think it's appropriate that we not fund the full amount and, and, and um, leave some owners um, on Sean to, to raise some funding sort of consistent with right. what the Eagle Scout project should be about. But I think he's, um, from what you said, he's done that. So I think if we were to fund the balance, that's that seems reasonable to me. Yeah, and that's, exact, that's exactly what he's done. He's uh, uh, raised funds. Uh, I'm not sure whether he went to the PTO yet, but the PTO would be another possible source of some funding. But uh, given the budget, uh, um, uh, asking whether there's a motion to uh, approve funding this project. So, Richard, just before that, how does our budget look for this year so far? Well, this is only the tree fund, and the tree fund is pretty okay. healthy. Got it. So then I have no objections. No. I move to approve that uh, allocation to the Eagle Scout project. Okay. Second? Second. Second. Okay, any objections? If not, we consider that approved. Okay, community garden, Renee. Before we move on, what was the, um, what's the total maximum? Um, do, do, bear with me a second. Um, he has a maximum price of about 1300. Right, and and you said that he's raised something like two hundred and fifty. Yes, independently. So, so the, the the amount that we would be funding would be no more than a little over a thousand dollars, if that. Right. I, yeah. as I said, I would not expect that. Um, he's going to need this whole budget because of donations, and reducing the number of uh, choke yep. berries. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Community garden, Renee. Um, okay. So, so the garden is is season is coming to an end. Um, we are planning on doing a pot like in the fall. Um, that that's date is TBD. Um, one challenge that that the gardens have been having is that um, you know with with the bee project, there are certain um, supplies that are needed, uh, like, for example, food for the winter and, and other things that, you know, we can only obtain from like a local farmer, and it's difficult to obtain a PO. And the purpose of a PO is to get, you know, tax exemption. So we are um, looking to schedule a meeting with Eugenia um, to kind of work around those challenges so that we can, you know, continue to be able to buy those supplies in a timely manner and, and support the bee project um, without, you know, jumping through all of these hurdles. So that's, that's one thing. The second item is that um, we, we've been talking about how to raise additional funds for the garden and uh, agreed that a good idea would be to sell luminaries and, and to display them around the time of the winter walk around town. Um, so, unfortunately, um, you know, we, we found out that, that the local Rotary Club of Summit has the same idea in mind. Um, so we reached out and, and actually um, bad news became kind of better news because what, what they will do is they will support us in, in kind of setting up the, the infrastructure, the advertising, um, the payment, and then what we would need to do is just kind of assign street captains and 
And basically, if, if I'm the street captain for Chaucer Drive, anyone that buys um, a luminary from, from the streets around Chaucer, um, we would take, would be able to take 50% of, of the profit for that. So it, it's great because, you know, the community garden's small. We have, a, you know, small list of volunteers and, and the Rotary Club would be able to do the heavy lifting, but we could definitely reap the benefits. So, so we're, we're currently working on, on kind of navigating those waters and, and hopefully it will help with our fee project as well as other projects for, for community garden in the future. Any questions on that? I missed what you said you needed to purchase in connection with the B project, Renee? Oh, so um, so we need to, for example, feed feed the bees for the winter. Okay. You know, um, because if we don't have food, then they die. So all our okay. food for naught. So that, that's an absolute necessity. And and what, what's been happening is is the gardeners have kind of been just funding some of the, the, the bee stuff out of pocket which isn't really fair um, and it's not, certainly it's not sustainable. So we're looking to talk to, to the, the township about how to work around some of those hurdles. Okay, Kevin, no, okay. Well, what, what is the recommendation? So because, because some of these, you know, the, the things that we need to purchase are not taxed items. Why would we need a PO, right? Because we're not gaining and we're not losing. So why couldn't we just just purchase uh, like the bee food out of our budget and and call it a day? I'm not an expert in the field, but I, I think a tax exempt organization can buy things from a taxable organization. I mean, I. I don't see what the conflict is. So the, the whole PO process is difficult and, and time consuming, right? And, and a local farmer, you know, isn't willing to kind of, you know, go, go through that process with us because they're just, they're not that sophisticated, if you may, right? But we're not paying tax on beef food anyway. No, so no. Why, why should we even get a PO? So let me let me back up uh, uh, because of what you're raising. If you're buying from a local farmer and you're not paying taxes on that, why do we may, need a PO? Right, you may be able to then simply uh, oh, purchase yeah. that and submit the bill. Correct. I, I, so that's the that's the question to Eugenia. I think you can do that, but just confirm that with Eugenia. We are. Okay. Okay, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, I don't know if what they the your group is doing is even subject to the oversight or restriction of the township treasurer. Well, we we've challenged that, Kevin, and we've been told we are. Yeah, but she's but she's wrong. With all due respect to the treasurer, I disagree with her. Um, the fact that she facilitates or administrates that does not give her veto power over it. This, this does not impact the municipal budget at all. So you're not held to those same PO, you know, the, the competing bid requirements and all that kind of baloney. That, right. I mean, that she, she is incorrect, technically. Um, and I would be more than happy to call her tomorrow to inform her of that. Yeah, so we're we're we've reached out to schedule a meeting, Kevin. If you'd like to join, I'd be happy. What, what, yeah, no, I would I would welcome the opportunity. Okay, so I will make sure to try to include you in that meeting, considering schedules permit, right? Because we yeah, have. Yeah, and I I just yeah, I mean I mean uh, I'll make every effort because she's she's wrong. I with all due respect to her, I disagree with her. Uh, this is routine. And, right. and, get, and I think we're basically going to agree without, without getting a PO. It's, it's very challenging, you know, and then, yeah. I don't think you need to go through the PO process, especially since you're not paying tax. Uh, and, you know, there is 
you know, there is a routine set up for buying from local businesses for the Environmental Commission, for example. So we have a budget. Uh, and then we go to a local business such as Halls or we go to, um, you know, uh, the hardware store in town and they will accept uh, our purchasing something. They submit that bill to um, the township at care of the Environmental Commission. There's not a problem with having to go through a PO in advance of that. Right. So you should be able to do uh, it even more easily. So uh, if there's a problem, I, I suspect part of the issue is that the first time you use a supplier, a vendor, you've got to be set up as a vendor in the township system. That's so that the maybe right. that, the, that these farms are not are not wanting to go through. So it works That's fine right. for local businesses once they've gone through the step, but these are one-off purchases, presumably. Not only that, the purchases are not for a large amount of money. We're not. Talking. I mean, I mean, typically, I mean, Renee, what, what, how much money are we talking about? Oh, just a couple hundred dollars. It's not even. No. Yeah, yeah, this is it's, it's really preposterous. Right. All right. 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 We'll we'll so, make this we'll make this problem go away. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate your support. <laughs> On onward, master plan discussion. Sorry, DJ, I forgot all about you, and I see that you're there. Um, and Deja sent around, uh, sent me um, a, a PDF, which I then shared with everyone. Is that the reason you're here to talk tonight, Deja? That's correct, yes. So I'm really here to listen to the feedback that the commission has on the memo. Um, let me share the screen just to be sure that, and just in case we don't. So this is what uh, you sent around, Tisha, the um, Berkeley Heights Master Plan Vision for um, Right, so um, there are two documents. Um, this one is a, a follow-up that I sent, I think, one, two weeks ago. So this is, um, we've been working with a firm called Arterial. And so they basically um, gave us these concepts for Sherman Avenue because we feel that Sherman has a lot of potential. Um, you know, it's not a county road. Um, it leads, it connects between the train station and the parks all the way through downtown. But right now it's kind of a wasted opportunity because, you know, it's really, it doesn't look like a street. Even in some areas, it kind of looks like a, you know, a parking area entrance sometimes. But um, we see a lot of potential in transforming this corridor into more of like a walkable mixed use um, shared route type of, uh, type of almost like a linear park that Arturia is calling it. Mm -hmm. And we've also talked to them about possible trail connections uh, between um, Sherman to, you know, where the Pacific River Trail start over at the very um, Western edge. So you can see that. So this is that document that really details what um, we've been developing with Arterial on Sherman. The other document is a memo that has um, all of the recommendations that we, we um, drafted in, in regards to some of the environmental issues. I, I, have, a, I have a question about this. The, um, being a member of the planning board and being involved in previous planning board uh, master plan reviews. Uh, is it typical for the, the town planner to give specific recommendation on specific projects and initiatives in the context of a master plan review? It could be. Um, it definitely depends on the town, I would say. You know, each town has different needs. And um, so in, in the context of Berkeley Heights, we because one of the largest priorities is really how to revitalize downtown, right? And as part of that, you know, we, we really see Sherman as a key to that because the reality is um, you really can't do much to Springfield because of how it's already shaped and how it's a county road, how it's just limited by a lot of factors. So 
what can you do to revitalize downtown? So that's why we put a focus on Sherman. With that said, you know, we're, this isn't really meant to go to the detail of, um, for example, like a site plan. So well, that's it, not something it, we're trying it, to do here. Right, but it, it's, it's dangerously close. <laughs> I'm sort of wondering, is, is this something where, just so I understand that the town planner is actually giving a recommendation to the governing body? Or is this something where the governing body is is giving a, presenting a, a concept design to the to the planning board? And I'm sort of wondering how does this tie relative to? It seems very commercially specific uh, relative to a strategic document that's under review. So this isn't really a straight project recommendation, I would say. Even the concepts they're developing, I think we're really seeing them as um examples you know kind of like vision concepts of for people to see what it could look like so you know we're not we're really not going to go into the detail in the master plan saying you know you need to have pavers here you need to have trees 10 trees over on that side it's not going to be that level of detail definitely it's really of um developing, you know, like a broader vision for Sherman and giving some key recommendations on how we could actually realize this vision for Sherman. I mean, is this one of two or three uh, township-wide thought pieces, or is this like the, the showcase piece? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Like, I, I, I just find it interesting that this is a uh, relative to a master plan. This is a very, very specific concept, you know what I mean? And I'm sort of wondering, is this part of a portfolio of ideas which are all consistent with the vision of the master plan or is this uh, the, the central focus of that? It's it's a part of it. We, we see it as part of um, how to improve downtown. Got it. I, I guess, so, you know, the, the downtown, we, we have some land use recommendations, right? So they deal with ordinance amendments, zoning amendments, and we have economic development recommendations that deal with some of the policy things that the economic development committee is working on. But then when you're thinking about really the overall environment of downtown, you also have to think about, well, what about the streets? You know, how are they going to look like? Um, mm -hmm. What can you do to make it more pedestrian friendly and make it more bicycle friendly? So yeah. that's the type of recommendations that this, this set of plans is trying to address. Got it. No, okay. No, thank you. I appreciate it. This is, it, it's, thank you. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, do you want to go through this, the rest of these slides, Deja, or do you want to talk about the memo? I'm just, we, we can do both. I mean, if, um, and this, you know, these plans are still a work in progress. So if, if anyone has thoughts on, um, you know, just even just reactions to this, um, you know, whether you think what we're trying to do with Sherman is a good idea. If you have any other suggestions, definitely I'd be interested in that. Um, and if not, you know, if everything is good, then we can also just move on to the memo. I think the concept is actually very appealing because I do think that that street area has potential and it does look um, very, very chopped up in places. Um, and, and it doesn't have any kind of continuity. It's, it's, as you say, it's the back end of buildings, it's parking lots, they don't even run one to the next in any sort of cohesive manner. So I certainly see it could have potential be a more pedestrian friendly space being a block off the county uh, the county road um so i think i think it's an intriguing idea did, yeah. you, did you talk to the peppertown park uh, kind of going on its own track but definitely we shared with Arturio the plans for Peppertown, uh, Peppertown Park so that they're aware of what's going on. And the, the recommendations are meant to 
complement that because you know there are certain aspects of Peppertown, including how they're going to be facing the street. You know what type of street street uh, streetscape improvements are going to be that are uh, more or less set in place, or at least the Pepperton Park Committee has an idea on. So again, you know these these plans by Ontario, they're not supposed to be as specific as you know really going to have, going down to what exactly the streetscape improvements are going to be. It's really supposed to be more high level, but okay. they do complement each other in that way. And in no way are they supposed to conflict with each other. Uh, one thing I thought I uh, remember from Peppertown Park was that they were proposing a bicycle path that would go along the railroad. But I'm, you know, this is from a long time ago, so I'm not sure if that's still a current plan. Uh, that I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, yeah, this this rendering is also not meant to represent all the details. I think it, it's really more of a general thing that they put okay. together, more so to show how the how the streets could be, and how the different lanes for different types of travelers can be shifted a little bit. Okay. But yeah, whatever is happening at Peppertown. Um, it's going to just go on its own track and, you know, be, be completed that way. And as it relates to master plan, basically, we're just going to be in support of that and making sure that everything that we're doing is going to be complementary to Peppertown. Okay. So just a couple of questions on, on the, the plans for Sherman. How, like this, this air, the street's pretty narrow. I mean, and I, I myself included. Um, we use this as kind of like a cut through because we don't want to wait at the light on Springfield, right? Um, so, you know, I, I, I love the concept, but where is this extra space coming from for the um, shared use path and the activity zone? Sorry, uh, could you repeat the last part of your question? So where where is the extra space coming from for the like the amenity zone, and if I'm reading this right, my eyes are bad, I'm sorry, and the shared use path. Yeah, right, I mean, so. It basically goes, goes through um, a street, which is also part of the, the commuter parking lot, right? Yeah. So, so would this be encroaching on the commuter parking to accommodate this? Uh, I don't believe it does because, so the right of way shown here includes both the sidewalk that's off of the curb and also the entirety of the um, of Sherman Avenue itself. So, you know what they're showing here is the actual width of if you if you add both, you know, just the road plus the sidewalks that are in the public realm. And um, so, to to answer your question, Renee, uh, we are proposing for um, so. I guess to clarify for one is that this, this one, the slide we have on right now, it's not actually meant to be um, what it's going to look like on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is really more when we have, um, uh, I guess activities kind of like winter walk, when you have these public events, when you want people to walk. And so these are ideas for when those events happen, when you actually are closing the roads you know, how can you structure the streets in a, uh, a more efficient way so that you're able to accommodate, um, you know, people bicycling, people um, walking, but also have amenity space for vendors and um, food cars, things like that. Okay. So this isn't actually supposed to be, you know, we're not saying, you know, every single day, we're just gonna close off half of the road. That, that's not what's happening here. Can you I think it depends also if you look um, east or west of Plainfield, because east of Plainfield, um, Sherman starts quite wide in the vicinity of Peppertown Park. When you go west of Plainfield, it's quite narrow and it's squeezed between the back of the buildings like the Y and the commuter parking. Exactly. So I think the width of, the, that, of that space is, is variable. Yeah, exactly my point. It's It's kind of... Yeah, going west, it's quite narrow. Yeah, I think I think east of Plainfield, I mean, the cart width is is uh, the road is conforming. I think as you go west, it's non-conforming, and it abuts 
um, New Jersey transit property. So I, I, though it might look aesthetically attractive, I, I don't know the practicality of executing on this. But I, th I think the, 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 the zone that, that in particular has more potential is probably the going, going east from Plainfield. So you're paralleling the downtown um, businesses on Springfield, which is sort of more dense, I would say, going east of um, Plainfield. Yeah, because I, I don't know if we can take a conforming road and then reach right and make it effectively non-conforming. I don't, I don't know how that would work from a code perspective. I mean, and, and this picture here, what you're showing, this is a sketchy area where I'm always like, I'm going to get hit, I'm going to die, you know, because people just, um, you know. Barrel through. Thank and you. So Deborah. this one is actually the existing condition. Yeah. Right now, right. Which is pretty bad. Right. Existing, yeah. Right, and we agree. I mean, one of the things that came up during our discussions in our material is that it's actually, if you really look at how this road is um, configured, you notice that there are just so many breakpoints because of so many driveways, even for uh, you know, the same property sometimes, the same property could have two or three driveways coming off onto Sherman and that just breaks up the street a lot. That also leads to the feel that you know, it's kind of like a back alley, almost feels like a private parking access way. So, that's something that, again, at a high level, you know, we might say it, it is something that does take a lot of will to and time to do. But one of the recommendations could be, if it's possible, you know, work with the property owners to consolidate some of these parking access so that you don't have these breakage every few feet to make the street seem more complete. Yeah, but, and, but, but would that require the town well, that's not the property owner, that's the town. Can you just reduce the street from 30 feet to 20 feet? Right, so definitely- and That's, that's going to impact traffic. That's going to impact a lot of things, which is a municipal issue. Yeah, right, exactly. And especially once these, like, you the know- property owners, The property owners, the like LAMP have, have no input into what the township does with its right of way. Well, they, they do have, you know, say on where they're locating the driveways of their property. So, right. So, yeah. right. so definitely, you know, going forward, the town could have more scrutiny over, you know, how they're constructing their driveways. But in terms of how they're existing right now, you just see all these breakages because of how many existing driveways there are. But that, that's really just an example of what we're looking at in terms of different sections along Sherman. And the points that you raised regarding, you know, different widths, those are all good points. And going forward, when we actually refine some of these concepts more, you know, they definitely have to look more in detail in on, on, uh, depending on which section we're talking about, you know, how wide it is, you know, which section is suitable for what kind of use. It's definitely not going to be, you know, a blanket concept of saying, okay, we're gonna be able to close everything along Sherman and make it this one way for right. many space, things like uh, that. It's definitely more dynamic. Sure. I, I have one last question. Um, getting back to the master plan, you had mentioned that this particular plan is not gonna be explicitly mentioned in the master plan because the master plan is a much more strategic document, right? So- um, this, this Sherman Avenue plan? Yeah, yeah, correct. I mean, that, it, that it will, it, it is going to be mentioned in the master plan. Right, but if adopted by the by the planning board, right? Well, so so this these concepts. Um, so remember the are thinking that, that, of including no, remember, as the part of the master plan. Right, but the master plan has to be adopted by the planning board. Right. Yes, you're correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so it could be recommended to the planning board and not necessarily carry the day, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, Oh, wait a second, Kevin. I think I, that's, theoretically, I yes. Think in, in I would know. I would say, big, I big picture, part. big picture, Kevin. I would expect the master plan to say something to this effect: revitalize the downtown area. Exactly, and that's why I find it very curious that the master plan would make statements like this, 
But now a master plan would also include specific reference to a project that hasn't even been presented to the, the anybody. Yeah, that would surprise me if this particular project is incorporated into the master plan. Yeah, it would be part it's, of the it's master awesome. plan. It should say something to the effect we're revitalizing the downtown, we're making it more uh, pedestrian friendly um, and uh, more environmentally friendly. Right. right. And the master plan, plan does that. So right. the, the way we're presenting it is um, actually, Richard, would you mind pulling up the memo? Yes, I've got it. So let me. Because I mean, the, the, the town planner does not drive this, the, mass, the planning board does. Actually, the, the version I sent to the Environmental Commission might not include that part, so that might be causing the confusion, but um, so the master plan does go from a broader scale. One of the main goals of the master plan is um, revitalization of downtown. So that's the overall goal. And one of the, and underneath that, you know, broad goal, let me actually pull up the full version of the memo. Ah, is this the, is this the memo that we're talking about? Uh, I don't believe the sections on the downtown were specifically included in the version I sent to the Environmental Commission because uh, okay. in that okay. version, I really just focus on the issues related to the environment and sustainability. But um, Okay, so if you want to share your screen, let me allow you sure. to do that. Okay. Uh, I don't think that, okay, now it is. So this is a full version of the memo, if everyone can see. So, and, and the downtown itself, because the issue is complex, right? So it's, it's separated into um, both both sections in the land use element and the economic development element. So in the land use element, where we talk about the mass, uh, sorry, where we talk about the downtown, A lot of references to downtown. <laughs> okay, I found it. Right, so objective one, facilitate the revitalization of the downtown as a vibrant, walkable, mixed-use corridor through supportive zoning and development regulations. So this section is in the land use element. And as I've you know mentioned to Kevin before, the revitalization of downtown, really, you need to look at different pieces. In a land use element, what we're looking at is how is the current zoning, the development regulations, how are they limiting the downtown in some ways? Mm -hmm. You know, what's what are the gaps? What are the things that we need to fix in the current zoning ordinance to be able to facilitate the uses and the feel that everyone says they want for the downtown? So those are the high-level recommendations we are talking about in a land use element. Okay. And then in the economic development element. You know, and that, that's a section that we've developed together with the Economic Development Committee because they also are working on a, street, a strategic plan. And their focus is actually not just on the downtown, but also on, on areas like Kano, um, Nokia, and just in general, the I-78 corridor. So the economic development element, uh, there's also uh, a big section on the downtown where we're talking about more policy-based things, like for example, how do you build relationships with local businesses to support their growth? What are some of the resources and programs that the township can actually um, start you know, incorporating to help some of these businesses and to market Berkeley Heights or even to um, you know, market some of the vacant properties, uh, the, the properties that need new tenants, the properties that new, need redevelopment, you know, how does the town um, investigate what those properties are, make an inventory of them, market them, and make uh, Berkeley Heights 
a desirable place for businesses to locate here. You know, those are the policy issues that we deal with and downtown is a big part of it. We also are talking about, you know, cultivate a unique sense of place for the downtown. You know, we're talking about, for example, creating a town square in a train station area. So that's, that's talking about potential impacts of, um, you know, once you get the new municipal complex, you're getting the new Peppertown Park, we're getting Mondelli Park, you have um, the train station there. So that's really going to be, you know, what we see as a central, a central landmark almost, a central activity place for Berkeley Heights in the future. Um, we're also talking about incentives through, um, for example, designating um, certain properties as areas in need of redevelop redevelopment, areas in need of rehabilitation so that there are tax incentives for property owners to um, rehabilitate and upgrade their properties. So we're talking about things like, you know, how do you make the downtown design guidelines better so that, you know, architecturally you get a better feel? Um, how do you create new uh, programs and um, cultural spaces, public art, um, public events to create a unique sense of space that people can enjoy. So it, it's very broad and we do have those. And where the Sherman Avenue concept fit into that is, you know, so again, as I said before, in addition to the land use factors you know, that, that are more regulation based and it's broader, and you also have these policy and programming things. Well, what about the, what about the streetscapes, you know? What are you doing to make sure? Because even if you, for example, even if you say you have the zoning in place for someone to come in and build a beautiful mixed use development and have the retail shops, but it doesn't work if you know what they're fronting on is a 50 feet wide, I don't know, an arterial with basically no sidewalks, you know, no place for outdoor dining, no place for just public activity. So you really have to think about. Um, revitalization in a comprehensive view, right? And so Sherman Avenue, Sherman Avenue is definitely a very important corridor along downtown. And as I said before, Springfield is very limited in what we can do. So that's why we put the focus on Sherman. And the, the concepts that Arterial is developing is designed to it's it's going to be structured in much of the same way that we've structured other ideas, you know, we're not going to say, you know, planning board, you, you have to make Sherman exactly as how Arteria has drawn it. That's not the case here. What we're saying is that, look, Sherman has the potential to become something like this, some where, you know, you have almost a linear park where it can be a shared path where, you know, you could have more bicycle lanes, you could have more space for pedestrians. You could have these connections between all these parks to the retail all the way to um, where um, the, the shopping center is. You know, you could, and how do you get there? Well, these are the recommendations. So, you know, for example, in, in the land use section, when we're talking about specific things about, um, you know, uh, revisiting the zoning ordinance in the Sherman Avenue section, we might be saying, you know, take a look at how all the, all the street breakages are happening because of the driveways. You know, make sure that that's something that the town is aware of when people are trying to redevelop their properties in the future. You know, don't, don't, don't allow them to do three driveways just because they can. You know, so those are the things that we're, we're talking about. Um, and it could also be recommendations about um, you know, considering um, what are the right considering you know how so so for example there's a <clears throat> there's actually a paper street along some of the um, parcels along the train tracks that's Sherman and those that those paper street they're currently not really utilized and you know when we're talking about arterial we're saying you know the the town they've been saying they really like the trails, they want to be, they want to expand the trail system, they want to have more opportunities um, around the Pacific River area. And, you know, Sherman is close to that. We also have these redevelopment projects on the Western side. Is there any way to connect them? And they said, well, what if we use this paper street? Because you can actually get a pedestrian access all the way across downtown 
and get you directly to um, the Pasig Avenue trails. So, you know, those are the types of ideas that we're trying to throw out to make downtown, you know, basically a better place for everyone. So, you know, again, it's really not meant to be this specific project, almost like a site plan, you know, planning board approved this, um, you know, this section of Sherman, we need to have this, this section of Sherman, we need to have something else. It's not meant to be like that. It's really something to, I guess, open up the discussion, if you will, to have people start thinking that this is something that's possible on Sherman. And these are the ideas we have of how you could actually get to that stage. Got it. All right. No, very good. Thank you for that clarification. A lot of moving parts. Right. So the documents so, on the screen, um, right? You know, if, if anyone else has comments on the environmental sections that we've sent right. out, um, I'd be happy to, you know, listen to them as well. And we'll be we'll be incorporating all the comments into a revised draft and and also presenting the memo to the public, I think, soon once we have a revised version. Has this version been shared with the Environmental Commission? Uh, so this this version is uh, slightly broader because it's it's a version that has everything, but um, I can pull up the Environmental Commission version. I saw that you shared a list of about 20 bullet points of that, that came out of our discussion. I'm not sure I've seen any more anything more extensive than that. I certainly haven't seen anything that looked like what you just shared. I see I saw the the um, concept on Sherman, but not the um, not the narrative document you just went through. I thought I had shared that with not that particular document, but an earlier another version that uh, Deja had sent. Um, and if Deja can't find that version, I have it. So there, there we go. Right. So this was a version that was shared previously with the Environmental Commission. So um, this one, they're really focused on uh, recommendations having to do with preservation of natural resources, um, hazard mitigating natural hazard uh, vulnerability, um, increasing sustainability, um, those types of issues. I didn't see this. Perhaps it's in my inbox. When was this shared? Back in August, uh, so the date is August 23rd. I think I sent it out on the 23rd or 24th, but I'm happy to send it around again. So are we looking for approval of this, um, this document or is it? Um... Looking for feedback, I think. DJ is looking for feedback. Yeah, so I think it's feedback and endorsement, right? Well, it's hard to endorse an extract of a larger document because we have to look at it in the context of the overall document. So we, we, we can give feedback on it. I, I would not recommend that the Environmental Commission endorse it. I, I, <laughs> I don't think that was a quite, that was the ask. Maybe I'm wrong. Deja, are you asking for us to endorse this or just feedback? Right. Oh, is, is it simply feedback? Right, simply feedback. So really, you know, if you have comments or thoughts on uh, what we've put in the recommendations so far in terms of goals, objectives, action items. If you think that there are certain things that need to be added, um, something that's you know, missing, something that needs to be edited, rewarded, um, something that doesn't, shouldn't be in here, 
Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So we're we're not looking for endorsement from the commission, but simply feedback so that we are able to um, revise the memo, refine it so that it's in better shape. So the memo is to who from who? This memo is to the environmental commission. This version here. Okay. So I mean, if if some of the commissioners have not had the chance to review this memo, I'm also happy to send it around again. And I can, I can redo that, Tisha. I can resend it. Right, and perhaps um, we we could also, you know, opt for just email written comments if that's easier. So this version is a five-page document. Yeah, happy to review that for sure. And sorry, I missed it the first time around. Um, do, should we target having comments um, for next meeting two weeks from now, or should we aim to provide comments by email before that? I think maybe comments by email won't work. Um, we are hoping to I guess, report back to the master plan committee in the next few weeks. And then afterwards, we're hoping to schedule some public meetings with um, the actual general public so that they could also take a look at the memo, um, the entire memo, I mean, not just the environmental issues. Um, so the, the general idea is that this memo is basically the backbone of the master plan, right? So these are the most important things in there. There's also other data. There's also going to be, you know, a lot of these ideas are going to be elaborated in the full document, but what you're seeing in this memo is basically the key ideas are going to be presented. So, right. Um, uh, if nobody else has any comments, I, I would like to make some comments uh, in regard to this, but I'll wait for everybody else. Uh, I'll review and uh, provide um, email comments based on the timing that uh, Digia just, just laid out. I think we should try to get feedback sooner than two weeks from now. That'd be great, yeah. I think that will work well. Okay, so uh, I'm going to come in with my screen now. Let's see, which would be, I think, on this page. Let's see if this comes up. Okay, so this is, this was uh, the, the memo. I just sent it around to everyone again. Um, what I'm missing in this uh, presentation is green infrastructure, uh, and, and I'm talking about green infrastructure along streets. You know, you can put a street, build a street like this with trees on the side of this, on the side. Um, you can have uh, streets without sidewalks with trees on the side, trees with sidewalks, but take it to the next step. And this is green infrastructure. This is a, a, a swale that is capturing water coming off of the street, capturing water coming off of the sidewalk, and letting it infiltrate. And if it uh, rains too hard... We're not hard, seeing your screen, Richard. Are you sharing? We're not seeing the screen. Oh, we're seeing the screen. All right, let's try again. So, you are viewing Deja's screen. Uh, stop. Okay. Now do you see a screen? We're back to the gallery view at the moment. Back to the gallery view. Okay. Come back to here. Come back to share a screen. Come back to here. Now. Now. Got it. 
Okay. So you've got rain gardens combined with street trees. But these are just street trees without, they're not taking up uh, water. They're, they're, all the water is running off of the sidewalk into the street. Surprising that these trees, trees are still there. You've got a normal neighborhood without sidewalks. Another normal neighborhood without sidewalks, no rain gardens. And then you have a neighborhood with a street. The rain is, is coming off the street into this garden. So this is one form of a rain garden with uh, basically with grasses and some perennials. And you see right here there's an overflow in case the rain garden fills up. This is called green infrastructure. Uh, could this be built along Sherman Avenue? I would think that uh, would be an option to explore. Uh, the thing is that uh, when you have this type of situation, you want to be sure that the subsoil can absorb the rainwater. There are other ways to approach this with green infrastructure. Here's a conceptual plan, plan from another town where you have the rainwater coming off the street and a build out of uh, rain gardens along the side of the street that are taking up some parking spaces. Then there's another places with parking spaces. You have it here too. It doesn't have to be completely filling up the street, but you could have this kind of, of uh, plan. Um, you've got entrance, you've got the, the garden, and the water infiltrating into the, into the garden. You can have trees in these gardens, or you can just have low shrubbery, or you can have uh, perennials. You can have a rock channel in the center. You need to provide with rain gardens overflow, and that overflow can go into a catch basin. So here the overflow is coming out and going into a catch basin. Here's a rendering of a possible rain garden along the side of the street. You think, oh, this is just flowers along the side of the street. No, it's set up so that it's taking water off the street and water off the sidewalk into the rain garden. Uh, could you do it at, on Sherman Avenue? As I said, you'd have to test the soil, see what you can do. If this doesn't, uh, if this soil is not permeable enough, there's another approach. And let me see if I can come to another. So there's another uh, view of a possible rain garden. The other approach is stormwater planters. Stormwater planters are a little bit more expensive because what you do is you're building a large planter. That is, this is all concrete, but down below there's a subgrade with bioretention media. That is, there's aggregate down here and soil separation fabric. And you're putting plants in here. So that is a whole container along the side of a street. So the water, stormwater enters here. You've got a concrete wall on each side. You've got a curb cut to allow the water to come in. And you're planting native plants. Native plants are well adapted to the soil. They don't need to take um, no, um, fertilizer. And uh, they basically, once they're established, need the kind of uh, maintenance that a normal uh, uh, planting bed would, would need. Um, so you uh, weed it in the spring and maybe you'd weed it again in the summer. Maybe an hour or a couple of hours, depends upon how big the garden is. These are the kinds of things that could be done along uh, Sherman Avenue. I mean, that's what I'm wondering. Could they be done along Sherman Avenue? Right, so you know we could definitely embellish some of the parts about green infrastructure more, and even mention these specific ones like as um, examples that the town could consider. That's definitely something that we can incorporate, um, and 
kind of going back to the discussion of the, the scope and scale of the master plan, you know, so we're, we're not going to go into the, I guess, to the detail of actually saying, for example, uh, we should pass an ordinance to require uh, property owners from installing uh, planters. So it, it's not going to be at that scale of the master plan. I think the master plan in this context is really going to be recommending, you know, really endorsing the fact that uh, green infrastructure is a benefit, for example, and saying these are the, the things that the township could consider. And once the master plan is passed, you know, then um, if, if the town does find that something like this is helpful and desirable, then that, that's, a, that's the stage when, you know, the Environmental Commission, for example, could um, suggest an ordinance to, uh, to add these green infrastructure requirements. And with a lot of, you know, zoning regulations, there is a requirement that it has to be consistent with the master plan, right? So that's where the master plan comes in handy because then you could say this ordinance that we've, we're presenting in front of council, it is completely consistent with the master plan because the master plan endorsed the benefits of green infrastructure and encourage more infrastructure. So I think that's at the that's going to be the scale that we're going to be addressing it, but that's definitely something we can embellish slightly more so that it's more clear. Okay, any other comments or questions? Adija, do you have anything else you wanna add? Uh, I think I'm just going to um, offer, and, and I also know that um, some of the commissioners were not here tonight, so Richard, perhaps if you'd be willing to circulate that memo again and ask yes. for- Yes, I already did. I did that. Okay, great. And um, yeah, we will be gladly, you know, we will gladly accept written comments from any of the commissioners who would like more, more time to review the memo or um, weren't here tonight. Um, so that, that's definitely something that we will, you know, we'll look forward to. I've noted and, that in, in my draft minutes too. So thank you. Right, and in terms of the timeline, I think perhaps would um, giving it two weeks be good? So maybe the end of, by the 17th, if we could have all the written recommendations or comments. Okay, sounds good. I will know that. Great, all right. Um, so that's, that's all I had, unless anyone has other questions. Good. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. And I uh, hope everyone has a good night. Great. Take care. You too. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, stormwater ordinance. Uh, I'm going to bring together the stormwater ordinance with the Plainfield Avenue trees because I met with um, Tom Sofero uh, last week on the Plainfield Avenue trees, the, um, basically the town does not have a specific plan to replant those trees and considers itself exempt from the ordinance uh, that requires uh, residents to replace trees. Uh, but the town has offered the residents along Plainfield Avenue uh, uh, to plant trees along Plainfield Avenue and perhaps even on the residents' property. Um, uh, as you all know, the sidewalk there um, that runs now uh, is uh, leaving a narrow strip between the curb and the sidewalk. That's not the best place to plant a tree, although you could plant a small tree. Uh, so um, it might be better to plant a tree on the resident side of the, of the sidewalk. And uh, Tom said uh, he would be happy if the Environmental Commission um, would help in uh, situating those trees and uh, selecting what trees would be planted. 
they do have that in their budget to uh, replant trees. Uh, and uh, that's part of the grant budget, I, I mean. Uh, while I was at the meeting, I asked him about the stormwater ordinance. He says uh, he would send me the stormwater, uh, the latest version of the stormwater ordinance. Uh, that has not happened yet, so I will ask him again uh, uh, to send the latest version of the stormwater ordinance. Questions or comments? If not, we're moving on to Sustainable Jersey Actions, Township Assets. Action, Kevin Hall. I have nothing to report this evening. Okay, Sustainable Jersey Green Team, that was uh, Kim. Direct install, I don't have any update. Reusable bag and education, that was Norit, and she's not here. I think she sent an email, but I didn't get a chance to look at it. And Brownfields, I was going to follow up on that. I haven't done that. I will write a note. Tree ordinance, we now have a draft of a tree ordinance, um, and uh, I just want to confirm uh, to uh, everyone that uh, I will ask Tom Bacco if he's in agreement with this draft, and then I will share it with you. You shared a draft um, maybe a month ago. Has it moved on since then? A little, a couple of minor changes, uh, David. One of the changes has to do with tree standards. The present tree standards uh, states that um, uh, when you're planting trees uh, on a, a road, that it's preferable to have all of the same species. I uh, recommend changing that uh, in favor of diversity. And specifically, there's a ratio that should be followed and planting trees on sites, and it's basically a 10-20-30 ratio. 10% of a species, um, and then 20% of the genera, and then 30% of the family. So um, if you're talking about maple trees, the species would be a red maple or a silver maple. Uh, but then the genera would be maples, and then the overall family above that would be uh, where you do 30% of other trees that are like maples. Um, so those are the uh, changes that uh, I recommended. Right. So are you awaiting Tom to share right. the new Correct. I was waiting to hear back from Tom that he confirmed, yeah, this we should submit this. And then I would share it with everyone and uh, uh, we'd move forward with it. Um, we skipped over adopt a drain. Is there anything on that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I see that. Adopt a drain. The Kim's not here and she didn't give me a report, so I don't have anything. Unless Angus has something. Um, moving on. Uh, Peppertown Park. That, again, was Kim. Nothing on that. Recycling. Angus? Anything on recycling? Uh, nothing on recycling. Topics for the township newsletter. Uh, back to um, you. I submitted uh, two uh, items for the newsletter to to the form, um, and uh, so they were. One was spotted lanternfly. If there wasn't already something going on, and then the other one was um, adopt the drain. Okay. For Saint River Park and Governor Livingston High School, I. Defer to David. Take notes on this, David. Okay, Passaic River Park. Um, we have a cleanup from um, employees of L'Oreal scheduled for Thursday this week, and they will do some work on some further cleanup work on Passaic River Park. Um, 
I'll also note that the location where um, John and I thought would be a great spot to put a bridge over the um, one of the little tributaries into the Passaic was well and truly underwater last week. So um, you might need to think some more about that. Although recognizing too that the Passaic River was at a, a near historic high. So I'm not sure how much we, we, we need to um, work around last week's storm. But it's what it is. I have the, the forecast is for more storms, right? Just what we need. Um, <laughs> so that's it for Passaic River Park. I've got nothing on. Um, GL. And GL, would, uh, what did I say? Three, three L'Oreal volunteers will come. Oh, the, the L'Oreal volunteers, yes. Yeah, three that, that's to clean the, to maintain the rain garden? Yes. Right, got it. Um, but you'll have about eight, at least eight volunteers, I think. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Um, Trucks collection, trucks benches, nothing. Chemtrade, nothing. Reforestation, nothing. Lower Columbia Park, I'm sorry, no update on that. Leaf blower noise, I have nothing on that. Um, unless our visiting Thomas Farragher wants to talk to that, does he have any update from his end? You can up unmute yourself, Mr. Farragher, if you have. I take that as a no. Uh, EV charging ordinance. Oh. What? Somebody's talking. Okay. Uh, EV charging or ordinance, nothing. Trail map, that was John. LED bulb giveaway, Renee. The um, can we go back a second? The um, the trail map grant that was the um, ARP grant, right? Yes, yeah. Um, so that did kick off um, last week. Um, so there was a there was a there's a kickoff meeting of um, five or six of us. Um, and we have begun the process of um, determining how that money should be spent in terms of the um, sign enclosures um, and first steps towards getting agreements on what those should look like um, and where they should be placed. Okay. It's a fairly short time frame. That ne project needs to be wrapped up, i.e., the um, the sign kiosks in place by about December. So it's actually a really short runway to um, get everybody to agree agree on designs and get them fabricated and installed. Well, there's certainly some that already exist. You could use as a a model. Yes, yes. Um, for the, the, the devil's in the details. So for, for example, one of these was to be at um, the new town hall. Um, one I think was to be on county property. So everything that goes on county property has a certain look about it. Um, that's a very rustic look, and that doesn't fit, wouldn't fit with the town hall. So um, there would need, there'll need to be some either agreement to go with a single style or some um, agreements on different styles for different locations. Nothing's insurmountable, but it's, it's, there's a, there are a number of parties who have interest in this, and we need to get alignment in a pretty short space of time to get these things fabricated and in place by December. The starting point, I think, is the um, the Union County Park um, kiosk. So there's one at the 
canoe launch on Snyder. There's one at the um, Robbins Avenue. Say again? Robbins Avenue, opposite Robbins Avenue. Yes, yes, indeed. So that's the sort of default. Um, if we can get that agreed to, that would be the simplest. And the county could likely make those as a, as a service. Any questions, comments? If not, we move on. Renee on um, LED bulb giveaway. So LED bulbs, so Richard, you were there. We decided we spoke with the mayor at the um, videotaping of our Adopt a Dream. And we came up with a creative way to um, give away the LED bulbs. Um, so we will be giving those away at the, the um, recycling events that are happening now twice a month, as well as at, at, at senior meetings. Um, as well as at other events. So I know Richard, you had picked up several um, for scouts that had kind of contributed with volunteer events. So we're going to oh, stop. That, I, I'm sorry, that was uh, actually student uh, volunteers at Master Gardeners who were doing the tree survey. Oh, okay. Thanks for the correction. So um, we'll continue to kind of stockpile those until we can and then distribute them as needed for, for um, I guess, the services. Okay, moving on. Do I need to keep this on the agenda, Renee? I'm just asking. Uh, it's up to you, Richard. Well, if you're taking care of it, I would consider it completed. So I would say we can just consider if you're taking care of it and we don't have any more feedback, unless you come back and say, okay, we need to talk about it. No, then take it off. And if anything comes up that's, you know, interesting, I'll, I'll raise it as an agenda item. Okay, thank you. Uh, for our stewardship bill, I have no update. Green amendment. I sent uh, something around which came from uh, uh, ANJEC that the green amendment is moving forward. Um, township cleanup. Uh, anybody aware of something there aside from, I expect there's going to be a township cleanup from Ida that they'll be putting out, people will be putting out large appliances that are no longer usable that were in their basements and the like. Um, so this was, um, this, this item specifically was about um, doing this was the township about um, right, right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, David. Go ahead. Yeah. We talked about doing a township wide litter pickup in um, about October. So, cooler weather um, after the back to school rush and with some of the vegetation dying down, a bit more ability to, um, to see and pick up stuff. Um, so, I guess pretty soon we need to start picking a date and publicizing that. Okay. Westfield electric vehicles show October 2nd. No update on that. That was the Kim. So Richard, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Just to go back, I have a ton of amazing, uh, phenomenal pictures of stormwater events living on Chaucer with the current storm. So um, let me know when you need them. Okay. Quite pathetic, um, but definitely will help build our argument for the future. Yep. Uh, ordinance on sports courts, uh, nothing there. Street lighting. Is there a follow up on the sports courts or is that? I think the, uh, I have not seen an ordinance on it. Uh, although it was, you know, coming from the zoning board. Um, and I think the question was, what's a sports court? And there was not a definition that I saw. And I think I asked Connie, but I haven't heard back uh, that a sports court is really uh, has a specific definition. I imagine a sports court could be a basketball court or a tennis court or uh, um, some other kind of 
impervious surface that would allow you to play sports on it. Yeah, I think the main question that came up was whether calling something a sports court would sort of um, allow it to avoid the other provisions of of the um, impervious coverage ordinance. And we got the clarification that that was not the case. Exactly. Just like any other impervious service. So um, that being so, if there, are, I, I don't think this needs to remain on the agenda for future meetings. I agree. Okay. okay. Street lighting, going to Alvaro in case he has something to say here. Uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 did, I did the study that I was planning to do with utilizing uh, information from um, from the township billing, as well as the documents from JCCNL and the tariff. I sent it over to Kim. The net of it is that it's not it's not actually feasible to pay back as many years uh, to accomplish that because there's some unusual requirements from the tariff from JCCNL to uh, pay for both the stranded costs of the fixtures as well as the new fixtures. And those are just exorbitantly expensive. And so it doesn't make sense for us to do that. I did notice that there is a um, that, that there is activity at the DCU uh, to um, uh, to uh, uh, include LDD conversion in in, uh, in, in uh, standard rates. So that would ultimately potentially cover the cost of that. So there's not a lot of point in our pursuing that on our own at a significant cost. Um, and and uh, while, while this may ultimately become a sort of a mandate. Okay, thank you, Alvaro. I'm going to take it off the agenda as well then, because of your report. We've covered everything on our normal agenda. Any members have any other topics they want to bring up? Sorry, I missed the adopt the drain uh, portion. Uh, the uh, the only update on that front is uh, we got the video up. Uh, it's on the website, um, so the website is updated. We already started putting things in the gallery. So, you know, if anyone has any additional pictures to share on the gallery. Uh, we would love to have more. Okay. Thank you, Angus. Thank you. Thanks. And before we go to the citizens hearing, I just want to say thanks for taking time off on Thursday, David. Um, uh, no problem. It's, uh, I know that vacation time uh, can be very valuable for families. Um, so I, I'm actually able to do that as um, as part of my volunteering for my company. Oh, great! So I can, um, yeah, I I can charge this to to my own volunteer time. So okay, it's not personal vacation time. Thank you. But thanks. Citizens hearing. Okay, anyone who's attending uh, from the public can speak at this point. Mr. Corrales and Mr. Foriger. You can unmute yourselves if you want to talk. If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. 9.07 p.m. 9.07 Okay, if no objections, then good night to everyone. Have a good week. And uh, uh, our next Thanks, week, everybody. Good night. Good night. Yep. See you Thursday, Richard. See you Thursday. <laughs>